Hello. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different to what you'd normally expect to see on this channel, as it's going to be a tutorial. Now, you know me. I'm not one to brag, but in the past I've got over four comments on my previous videos asking for behind the scenes tutorials and how I do my practical effects. I think the numbers speak for themselves. So today, or whenever you're watching this, I'm going to show you how to make a bursting boil effect, which is a variation on the copy spot effect from my previous video, Top 5 Weirdest Alien Diseases. So if you haven't seen that video, then click the card in the corner of the screen now. But the effect we're going to be creating looks a little bit like this. So this effect is a mixture of practical and digital. We're going to be building the boil and bursting it, and then digitally superimposing it onto your skin. So first things first, let's start with our materials list. List of things you're going to need to make this thing. And in that list, you're going to need some green paper, or card, or in this case, foam. We're going to be using this as a little green screen. So the color needs to be as close as it can be to chroma key green. Then you need a happy little piece of card, cut to the same size as your bit of green. He's just happy to help out. And we're going to need some of our runny old friend, good old liquid latex rubber. Yellow paint, PVA glue, and craft glue and some balls of cotton wool, some fake blood, a syringe, a scalpel blade, and some white and yellow acrylic paint. A length of plastic tubing. I went for about a 12 mil diameter, but anything between 10 and 20 should be okay. Plain flour, and some water. And finally, some red acrylic paint. Next, we're gonna make it. So we need a method screen. So we take our happy little piece of card and we pour glue on it, and then spread it out. I got excited and used far too much glue. And then stick down your piece of green on the card. Yay! Then mark on and cut out a hole for our plastic tubing. Once you've pushed the pipe through, turn the card over and glue it from the back with our craft glue to hold it in place. Unroll and peel apart a couple of balls of cotton wool. Yay! Then take the cotton wool and very delicately dip it in the liquid latex. Take the moistened cotton wool and shape it around the hole of the pipe to begin to create the shape of the boil. It's easier to do this with a paintbrush or something with a rounded end rather than your fingers because the cotton wool tends to stick your fingers. And then clean up any dripples of latex around the hole. Then once that's dry, do the same again and put a second layer on to build it up a little bit more to get this boil shape. I find it's easier to do it in two stages because the cotton wool and liquid latex is a bit fiddly if you do it all in one. On a smooth surface, like a plate or a cutting board, we're going to dab on a little bit of liquid latex and let it dry. This is going to be the cap and the top to our boil. And when it has dried, cover it in talcum powder and peel it off. The talcum powder stops the dried latex from sticking to itself. Then trim this end piece to roughly the same size as the boil. So we're going to take some of our red acrylic paint and paint the inside of the boil red, because it's an open wound on the inside. And then we'll also paint the outside of the boil red. So what we're going to do with the outside of the boil is we're going to get a damp bit of cotton wool and brush most of the red paint off, just leaving bits in the nooks and crannies so it looks like a raw piece of flesh. We're going to accent around the edge of the boil where it touches the green screen to make the edge look more sore and raw. And then coat all of that in a thin layer of liquid latex, which will seal the paint and give it a nice meaty shine. And speed up the drying process with a hot air gun or hair dryer. Then we're going to take our craft glue and glue on the circuit of liquid latex we made earlier for the cap onto the boil. And then once that's dried, trim it a bit if it overhangs. Try and get the edges as smooth and rounded as possible. Then seal the edges with liquid latex, which will help cover up the hard edge of the cap. And then get out our friendly hair dryer again and dry it up. Use a light dusting of red paint to help blend in the seam a bit more. Then we're also going to paint the back of the pipe red in case you were to see it from the other side. Next, we're going to mix a little bit of yellow acrylic paint with some liquid latex and use this to paint on our boil. The liquid latex in the paint helps the paint to stick and move with our flexible latex model. Otherwise, straight paint just tends to crack. We're going to take some of our yellow paint and liquid latex and paint the top of the boil and then blend it in. We'll do this a few times and then once you've done that thing, we'll mix some white paint with liquid latex and paint that on the end. And then a little bit more yellow and then finally blend it with a little bit more red. Then we're going to coat what we've just made with some more liquid latex to give it that lovely gross sheen. Boil! So once that's dried, we're going to take our scalpel and we're going to cut into the surface of the boil. And we're going to be cutting in slits for the pus to ooze out of. And next, a short musical interlude. So now we're ready to make the pus, which is about a tablespoon of flour and some water. And then we mix it together to get the right consistency. Now this is too runny, so we're going to add some more flour. It needs to be runny enough that it can run out, but it needs to be thick enough that it doesn't just pee out our water. So as soon as we've got a nice pus consistency, we're going to add some cheap yellow poster paint. And then add a nice little dribble of our liquid fake blood. And stir it slightly so you get little nuggets of blood in the pus. But not too much. We don't want pink pus. Then suck it all up into your syringe good enough to eat. So now we're going to fix our green screen and boil to something. I've used two tripods, you could use the back of a chair, whatever you've got that's the right height to work with. Tape it or clamp it on, then you're going to fill the pipe in the back with our fake pus, and then blow it out at the front. It's a bit of trial and error as to how hard you blow it out, you can even make it trickle out or burst out. It's up to you. I got a dribbly and a bursty one, and you'll see later I combine the two. And finally, we need the actual footage of where the boil is going to be on the skin. I've chosen my fat tummy. So I've drawn a cross at the point I want the boil to be. You can use a little sticker if you'd prefer not to draw on yourself. We just need a point that the camera can track for After Effects. That's the physical side of the effect. Done. So next, we're going to take our footage and drop it into After Effects, or your video editing software of choice. 
First, we're going to take our two bits of footage and make sure they line up. So we want the point of pinching to be when the boil bursts. So we're going to put our boil footage above our skin pinching footage. We're going to press T to get the opacity of the top layer up and set it to 50. So we can see the layer below through it and then line the layers up. Once they're lined up, turn the opacity back up to 100 again. The next job is to track the movement of the cross on the skin layer. So I'm going to go layer, new, null object, and we're going to click on the fat stomach layer and go to tracker. Click on track motion and our tracker box will appear. And the point of which the X appears, as it's hidden under my hand to begin with, we're going to set the center point for our tracking. So I'm going to set it going. This takes ages, so I'll just skip past it. And now we have all our tracking information. I'm going to go edit target and I'm going to select the null object as the target. We're going to apply this information to the null object we created, cross X and Y. And now you'll see the null object moves with the cross. So for some for some reason my recording software isn't showing any of the drop down menus or pop up menus on After Effects. So yeah, sorry about that. I'll fix that for next time. So back to our boil layer and apply the key light effect to it. And then under screen color, use the color picker to pick the green of our little green screen. This will make the green disappear. And then tweak this by increasing the screen gain and the screen balance. Increasing the screen gain will remove a bit more of the green screen. The balance will shift the color of what's being removed. And then also adjust clip black and clip white to suit and increase the screen softness and play with the screen shrink grow. All these perimeters will be different for you depending on the color of your green, how you've lit it, how your boil bleeds onto the background. So those are the main perimeters I play. Screen gain, screen balance, clip black, clip white, screen softness, and screen shrink and grow. So once we've got that roughly looking all right, we're going to align the ball with our X. Then we're going to drag this little spiral button, which is the pick whip, to parent our boil to the null object. So our boil layer will move in line with the null object, which is moving in line with the X, as the null has all our tracking information on it. Then we're going to do layer, new, solid object, and create a white solid layer. Again, the pop-up menus aren't showing on my recording software, annoyingly. Go ahead and turn the white layer off. We're still gonna be working on it, but we don't need to be able to see it. So we're gonna use this white solid object to hide our boil behind my hand as it comes down. So on the white solid object, we're gonna draw a mask around my hand. Then we're gonna increase the feather on the solid object to quite high because it's quite blurred at this point and add a keyframe to the mask path. And we're gonna move the path of the mask down as the hand covers the boil. So we're gonna follow the line of what would be obscuring the boil. And we'll do this frame by frame because it's quite a short transition. It's only a few frames. So on the boil layer, we're gonna change the track mat option to alpha and inverted matte. So everywhere there's white, it's going to hide the boil. Again, the pop-up isn't showing. So you've seen now the boil is hidden wherever the white of the object on the layer above it is. The track mat's always defined by the layer above it. So the next step is to take the mesh warp effect and add it to our boil layer. We're going to make our boil bulge as it's squeezed. So in the mesh warp effect perimeters, under distortion mesh, you're going to set a keyframe. You're going to set the keyframe before the boil begins to be pinched, and then you're going to move to the point at which the boil is most pinched. At this point, you're going to bring in the edges of the boil and stretch the top and the bottom. As you squeeze something, it becomes thinner and longer. Also, in my particular footage, since it's now following the null object and moving about the screen, the pus doesn't quite reach the bottom of the frame. So I'm going to cheat with the mesh warp effect and bring the pus down so it reaches the bottom of that frame. Next, we're going to quickly add a hue and saturation effect to our boil layer because the tones don't quite match up on my skin. So I'm just going to turn the hue wheel ever so slightly until it looks like it fits in on my skin a little bit better. After that, if you go layer, new, solid object again and change the color of the object to more of a ready color, we're going to use this as a sore spot behind the boil. So if you draw a mask offset roughly from the edge of the boil, put the feather on that right up. So change it to multiply and then add a hue and saturation effect to that layer. It's an easier way to tweak it. We're going to bring the lightness up a little bit of this particular color I've chosen. And then we're going to change the turn the saturation down as well. Get it so it looks right with your skin color and your boil. We're also going to parent this red layer to the null object as well. So it'll move alongside the boil. So the next thing to do is to copy that white solid that we use as a track mat for the boil and put it above our red solid. And then again on the red solid layer, set the track mat to alpha inverted mat. It's just repeating what we did with the boil layer. So as the hand comes down, it's going to obscure that red solid as well. Then we're going to take our red solid layer and our track mat layer above it, duplicate those and move them above the boil layer. So this will be overlaid on top of the boil. Use a mask to subtract the red from the boil. So you've just got red around the edge of the boil. Just helps it to blend in a little bit more with the red below it. So from the menu bar at the top, if you go composition, save frame as Photoshop layers, it basically makes a screen grab of the current still of the footage. So you want to save that and take that as a Photoshop. So open up this file in Photoshop. So create a new layer. We're going to use the brush tool, change the brush texture to a nice rough one. We're going to create a quick textured edge around the boil to overlay onto the skin to help the boil blend the skin a bit more because at the moment it just looks like it's stuck on. Tweak the hue and saturation a bit in Photoshop to make it look as close as possible. And then within the file, delete every single layer apart from the one we've just created and save this file and open it up again in After Effects. So you're left with just this new texture we've created. So drop this into our composition, put it behind the boil layer and set the transparency to multiply. 
add a hue and saturation effect onto the layer and tweak it to get it looking how you want it to look. You can also add a quick blur onto it if you want to smooth it out a little bit. With this layer, use our same trick of parenting it to the null object as well, so it moves in line with the boil. I shoot in a very flat color profile, so we're going to do a quick color correction so we can see what we're dealing with. So then go layer, new, adjustment layer. Put on a curves effect, bring the highs up and the lows down to increase the contrast, add a hue and saturation effect, bring up the saturation until you're happy with how it looks. And then we can see if everything fits together right. We're going to add some shadow to our boil. So you create a new adjustment layer, call this layer shadow, parent it to the null object and put it behind your boil layer. And we're going to add the levels effect and bring the levels down to make it darker to create a shadow. Now with my footage, because I've got my lovely stream of pus, I'm going to draw two masks. I'm going to draw a mask for the boil shadow and I'm going to draw a mask for the river of pus. Now since we've parented this to the null object, it's going to move with the boil. I'm going to set a keyframe for the mask path and then keyframe the mask so as the pus dribbles down for the first time, the shadow follows it. So I'll do this frame by frame as we've done before. So if you increase the feather on the shadow around the boil, so it looks nice and soft. You can have less of a feather on the stream of pus because it's closer to the skin. Remember earlier I said I got a nice bit of bursting footage, so I'm going to drop this nice little burst over the top. So I'm going to time it as the burst erupts as the boil is squeezed. And as before, I'm going to parent this to the null object so it moves with our boil. And then again, I'm going to create a white solid and use it as a track mat above. Then I'm going to draw a mask around the pus erupting from this new bit of footage. And I'm simply just going to keyframe the white solid track mat so it's revealing the pus when it needs to be. This is a bit of a quick and dirty fix, but it worked for this footage. And that's it. And there we have it our bursting spot or boil effect. So for anyone who wanted to try this themselves, I've put the links to the materials in the description below. Now this is just a new kind of video I'm trialing on my channel. It's not gonna be replacing my main sketches, but I might try and do one in between each of those videos. So if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see more of, then let me know in the comments below. And if you have any requests from effects I've done in previous videos that you'd like me to cover, then let me know down below. Get typing. Okay, thank you, bye.